Good morning, everybody. If you turn to number 23 in your hymnal, number 23 in your hymnal, please stand. Please stand. Ephesians chapter number 6, and when you 
Finally, would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? Ephesians chapter number 6. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for because you are our Heavenly Father. And then we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to be fathers. What a great responsibility we have, Lord, as fathers. I pray for every father who's watching uh, and is represented, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, for their families, for their children. Lord, I pray as we look into thy holy word this morning that we may be able to uh, gather some uh, useful and, and very uh, important wisdom from your holy word, Father, concerning how to be a, uh, a godly father, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give us what we need today, Lord God, to be the fathers that we need to be. And I pray, Father God, that you bless our children as they follow us. As we set the example for them, Lord God, so they can follow in our footsteps, Lord, help us to uh, teach them the right way and to do right before them, Lord, so that you would bless their lives also, Lord God. And Father, we do love you, we thank you, and we ask these things now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> so if you're wondering about me preaching Father's Day message again, well, you're getting a double portion. And so today is going to be more practical. Uh, Father's Day, a more practical type of message. And I wanted to, um, when I was thinking about what, what to preach on, as, as I began to pray and ask God what I should preach on, this phrase uh, is, it, uh, started uh, being impressed in my mind. And that's in verse number 4, Ephesians 6, 4. It says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Provoke not your children to wrath. And, you know, when you, when you are, um, when you have children as fathers, first of all, and the Bible says in the book of Psalms, look at Psalms 127. Keep your finger here in Ephesians. Psalm 127 In Psalm 127, we see very clearly that children, um, children are not an accident, okay? Children are given by God. And we see here very, very, very uh, clearly in verse 3, Psalm 127, verse 3, the Bible says, Though children are an heritage of the Lord, okay? They are His heritage. They are uh, His inheritance. Children come from God. They are given by God. God is the opener and closer of the womb. And we know that they're given by God. And this is the gift that God gives to women. It's called the fruit of the womb. And it is a reward. Uh, children are a reward. Children are not a nuisance. Children are not uh, uh, they're not uh, thought of anything negative they're precious children are literally jewels children are literally diamonds in the rough and God gives us the responsibility to uh, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and to train them God gives us a, a, a promise in Proverbs 22 6 which says train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not be far from it so that is the, the, the part that we have as parents, but we need to recognize that children come from God. They are given by God. They are a gift from God. The Bible says that they are a reward. And for a man to have children, the Bible says that they're arrows. Children are arrows and his, and his quiver. That is the, uh, the little basket that the, uh, uh, a man with a bow holds in his back, and he puts his arrows in there. That's his quiver. Okay? The Bible says that, that happy is the man, okay, that had his quiver full. I'm thinking of my son-in-law, 
uh, DJ Hernandez, who's awaiting his seventh child uh, next month. And so he's, uh, his quiver is, he's filling up his quiver, okay? And so they uh, come from God, they're given by God, they're a reward from God, and they are arrows. As arrows, they are instruments. They are literally weapons, okay, given by God to the mighty man. And so children are very, very special. Now, as a father, when I think as a father, uh, the, 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 what I should do for my children, when I think about that, I think about a word that is not used very much. It is used in legal terms. This word is used in legal terms. It is the word diligence, okay? And in legal terms, they say, do, do diligence. Do your due diligence. And what that means is this. It means the steady application in business or of any kind, steady application. Okay, remember that. Constant efforts to accomplish what is undertaken. Exertion of body and mind without delay or sloth. That's what diligence means. I like to call this message, Father's Diligence. Fathers, do your due diligence when it comes to your children. The Bible says here that a child can be uh, provoked. Verse number four, ye fathers provoke not. Okay, provoke not. So a child can be provoked. Okay, look at Colossians, keep your finger here, look at Colossians, Colossians 3. In verse 1, so, excuse me, 21, Colossians 3, 21, the Bible says, Fathers, again, provoke not your children to anger. Do you see that? Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. So children can be provoked. According to Ephesians 6, 4, they can be provoked to wrath. They can be provoked to wrath, which is another word for anger. Okay, but another thing that, that can happen to children is that in Colossians 3.21, it says that children can be discouraged. Okay, you can literally discourage uh, a young child's heart so that he loses hope. Okay, he can be discouraged. So, uh, when I think of, when I think of, children and when I think of children's security mom and dad the children's security is you and your husband mom and dad you are the children's security okay mom and dad you are the children's security let me tell you what threatens the children's security and when a child can become insecure when a child sees his mom and dad argue, they can become insecure. Why? Because it threatens their security. Because mom and dad are the security of the child. Okay? So, mother-husband relationships, okay? You have to watch those relationships because your children are watching and it affects them. God says here in verse number 4 that we are to nurture, but we are to bring them up and nurture. Okay? The word nurture is from the Latin word to nutrire, which literally means to feed. Okay? As, as when a mom, when a mother is uh, breastfeeding, okay? She is nurturing that child. She is feeding that child. She is using the Latin word nutrire. She's She's giving them nutrients. Okay? That is what the father is supposed to do. Uh, not, not breastfeed per se, but you are doing the same action in a different way. And how do you do that? You're bringing that child up. That's how you do it, by bringing the child up. Okay? 
That is the word nurture, to bring them up. Okay? Uh, a child can become discouraged. A child can be provoked to anger. And a child can feel insecure depending on the relationship of the husband and wife. Okay? Now the opposite is also true. What strengthens what strengthens that child's uh, uh, confidence in his home and in his family is the relationship between the mom and the dad. Okay? If he, uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 5.25, husbands love your wife. When they see you have uh, a relationship with your wife where you are showing, uh, when you're actually uh, showing kindness to your wife, you're showing kindness to each other, you show uh, uh, tenderness towards each other, okay? When you show uh, love towards each other, when they see that affection in you, that strengthens the child, okay? Now, the opposite is true also. When they see you arguing, that threatens their security, okay? Remember, you are investing your children are an investing, you are an invest, investing in your own selves. Okay? I told Craig a long time ago that your children are going to be the ones pushing you in the wheelchair. Okay? Taking you to the nursing home is going to be your child. Okay? Thank God that you have somebody to push you. Okay? Because there's a lot of parents who don't have anybody. Why is that? Because of the way they live their lives. They did not invest in their children. And when the principle is uh, applies in money as it is in their family. Okay? If you don't invest anything in the stock market, don't expect to get any, get any gain. Okay? Because you don't you didn't invest anything. You have to work at it. Okay? You have to train up a child and the way it should go. That's an investment. You have to nurture your children. Okay? Children can become angry, they can become discouraged, and they can lose their sense of security according to the relationship of the mom and dad. We are to nurture them, we are to bring them up, that means instructs. Okay? We are to instruct. Now, when I was, when I became, when I truly became a father at the age of 38, believe it or not, I had uh, three children already. Okay, because Mario didn't come after I was saved. So I had three children, and at the age of 30, uh, from, from uh, 1984 all the way up to the age of, of uh, 38, okay, I did not know how to be a father. To me, as a lost man, being a father, being a husband meant that I brought in the bacon, okay? I paid for the bills, and then I was done, okay? Diapers, crying babies, and all that, that's mom stuff, okay? I was a drill instructor, okay? I dealt with adult recruits 24 hours a day, you know what I mean? So coming home to crying babies, like, mom, tell me. That was me, okay? I did not know how to be a father. So at the age of 38, when the Lord saved me, the, first, the very first thing I did was set my girls down and I asked them to forgive me because I had not been a good father. And they all forgave me right there on the couch sitting down and said, we forgive you, daddy. And so that began my life as a father. But even then, I made a lot of mistakes. Because I had not, I had not grown up following the word of God. I had grown up following me, myself, and I. And so I made a mess of things, including my relationship with my wife and my children. Okay? I didn't, I didn't know how to be a dad. To me, they, they, they messed up. Get the belt up, okay? Or use the hand. That was it. You know, they, they, I was a disciplinarian. You know, but you have to be careful. Now, now I know. Now they're all worked up. <laughs> but for you, they have little ones. Listen, you have to know that they're friends, okay? Don't make them the same, same mistake that I made, okay? You, you correct 
child childishness, correct childishness. Okay? Discipline, disobedience. Did you see the difference? Nah, to me, it's all the same. It's back, back, back for everything. Okay? And it doesn't work like that. Okay? Remember, this hand is used to love. It's the same hand you use for discipline. Okay? God never said use the hand, did he? He gave you an instrument to use. It's called the rod. Okay? Why? Because these are for loving. These are for hugging. Okay? You get mixed signals when that he, he comes to hug you, <laughs> and the same, the, the same hand that gives the discipline is the same hand who wants to hug you. Like, <laughs> What's he going to do today, right? So, you know, little things like that. Discipline, okay? Use the rod for discipline. Use the hand for love. Don't get them confused, okay? And and don't don't discipline everything. Everything is not to be disciplined, okay? Some things are childish. Some, some things require instruction. I remember when I was a little boy, maybe like Timothy, okay? And for me, the greatest pleasure, uh, uh, pleasure that I ever got as a little child was when I would see my mom's table filled up with everybody sitting around it. I thought that was the greatest thing in the world for me. I don't know why. It, just, it was amazing. All my brothers and sisters, you know, and everybody sitting down eating together. That was great. But there was a problem. I always put my cup right here, like that. And you know, um, to this day, when I sit with, even with adults, I see them and I always move their cup and put it here for them. And they look at me like, what's he doing? Because I learned, you don't put your cup here because you know what's going to happen? Right there. Every day, every day for years, Craig, milk all over the table. Every day in the meal. My brothers, man, they got tired of disciplining me because they had gone past, you know, childish things. Now it was just disobedience, you know? And so, uh, Instructions, discipline are two different things, okay? You you correct some things, you discipline some things. Remember, as a father, you represent God in the home. You're God's representative in the home. Now, think about this for a minute. What kind of heavenly father do you have? That's the kind of father you need to be to your children because you're representing him. Okay? That's a big responsibility. Keep your hand, finger here and go to Hebrews 12. Okay? This is God's discipline okay, method right here. In Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, beginning in verse before, verse 5, it says, in Hebrews 12, 5, and you have gotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked. For whom the Lord, what? You see why he does it? It's because he loves you. And it should be the same thing for your children. Okay? You're doing it. Listen. This is something over simplistic, but listen. You're doing it because you love them. You're not doing it because you're you're angry at them. No. You're doing it because you love them. You see, you see how God disciplines? He does it because he loves us. He says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son in whom, whom he receiveth. And so you are God's representative in the home. Okay? You are God's representative in the home. Remember that. Let me give you some things that that will discourage a son or a daughter. Okay? Some things that will discourage a son or a daughter. Very practical things. Okay? Things that I didn't know. Things that I learned now as an adult. Okay? You will discourage your child when you correct them with unnecessary harshness or tone, okay? Spill milk, 
It's not the end of the world. Okay? It's not the end of the world. So learn to judge your times of instruction and discipline. Learn, learn, learn what, what, what's, what's suited and fitted for that situation. Okay? There's no reason to overreact. Okay? You know, you can have a bad day at work. You can have a bad day at work, and then you come home, and your child does something, it just triggers you. And without even thinking about it, you, you go to discipline, but you're, you're being angry. You have to be careful. You can discourage your child like that, okay? On the opposite side, okay, not correcting your child is really hating your child, okay? In Hebrews chapter uh, 12, God tells us that he corrects us and disciplines us and chases us because he loves us. Because if he didn't, look at verse 7. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom father chasteneth not? No discipline. You just let him do whatever he wants. Terrorize the house. Talk back to mom. You don't do nothing about it. Okay? You're showing that you don't love him. You have to correct those things. You have to instruct in those times. Okay? You cannot let him go on. A preacher once said, if you let your child grow up in your home without telling him about God, and that child grows up in your home and makes it to the age of 11 or 12, and you haven't shown him what God expects from him, you're going to have a tiger in your hands. That child is going to rule you. It's going to rule your home. And that happened a lot. We see that a lot in ministry. Children like that. Unfortunately, you know, some didn't do it. Now are paying consequences. Others are getting a, an opportunity to start while, while they're young, okay? You got to do it right away. Don't stop. Another thing that will discourage a child is this. Unreasonable expectations. Remember, they are children, okay? They don't know anything. They don't know nothing. Oh, they learn a few words now, and they can walk, right? And now they think they know everything, right? Oh, no, 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 mom, don't help me. I got it. I, I do it. I do it. I do it. Right? When they start telling you, I do it. I do it. I do it. They don't want you to dress anymore. They say, I do it. Because they think, yeah, I, I learned something, right? They still don't know anything. They don't know anything. They're no different than when they were babies, and, and you have to feed them and burp them and change them because they don't know nothing but crying, sleeping, and you know the other one, right? <laughs> They don't know anything. You have to train them. So don't put unreasonable expectations on them. Okay? Until you have exercised instruction to expect those things. Okay? But if you haven't put that instruction in, don't expect them to know. And if you expect them to know, that's unreasonable. That can discourage the child. How about this one from the Bible? Favoritism in siblings. Ooh, don't do it, parents. Don't do it. Remember what happened to Esau and Jacob, okay? The little destroys families. Favoritism destroys families. I have four daughters. Their hairs are all different. Uh, as far as silkiness, they all have the silky hair, but the color is different. Personalities are all different. They are completely different, okay? I always stay away from that. Don't show favoritism. Listen, when I go to the store, Here's the way I am. If I go to the store and I, and I buy something for myself, okay, I better get something for my wife. Okay? I, you know, me now, at my age now, I don't like to go out. If my wife's not here, I don't like to go out. Or if my wife is home and I go out, I can't bring myself to go out to eat. I can't do it. It's just not right. Because I want, I want my wife to be there. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel comfortable to sitting there eating by myself while my wife is at home. You know what I mean? And if I, if I definitely have to, then I'm going to bring her something. Okay? But if, I, if I'm going to get something from one of my daughters, I better get it for all of them. Okay? Be careful of the favoritism. Okay? 
because that'll cause a lot of lot of lot of, danger, a lot of harm. Another thing that would, that would uh, discourage a child is this: always finding faults. Okay, always finding faults. Remember, they're learning. They don't know everything. Sometimes they don't know anything. Okay, you have to teach them. So don't find fault all the time because, or because the, the child will become indifferent. Listen, if you are always finding fault, then your child's gonna go, well, what's the point? That's never happened. What's the point? He's going he's to give up. He's not even going to try anymore. He's going to become indifferent because you're never satisfied. Okay? Don't find fault. Find, listen, instead of finding fault, find a reason to praise a child. Find a, you know, you, you would be amazed what a little praise will do to a child. Man, his ears will perk up, his little chest will stick out, and oh, my dad said I was this. Just a little praise here and there. You don't have to overdo it, but in its proper times, they will do wonders for your child. Okay? Learn this from the military, okay? Wisdom from the military. Correct the privates. Praise in public. You see that? Correct the private, praise in public. I would go to people's homes where the child was present and the mother would begin to what I call royal to start telling me everything about him while he's standing right there. Oh, he just obeyed me and he said this and he said this and he went over there. He's just start telling on him while he's standing right there. Okay? That's not right when uh, a parent does that. Correct the private, praise the public. Remember, they are tender little plants. Tender little plants. You need to, listen, when, when you plant a plant and a, and a, and a, and a little, uh, a little a plant, right? You want it to go crooked, so you put a stick in it and you tie it to it. Okay, so it'll go straight. That's what you have to do with children. You have to uh, treat them like tender plants. You have to take the weeds out, okay? Things they shouldn't have. Then you have to water them. And then you have to fertilize them with God's word. They're, they're at work, okay? They're at work. But let me tell you, the results are going to be amazing. If you do your due diligence as a parent, as a, as a father, the results are going to be amazing, okay? And mom's going to be happy. She's going to be content, okay? And they don't have to be anybody important. They just have to be children that love the Lord. Uh, respect the parents, man, that's that's a big thing today, in this day and age, just to have that. Many parents would be happy with just that. Okay? Watch your actions. The most powerful, the most powerful uh, tool that you have at your disposal is your example. It is your example. Do as I say, not as I do. That's wrong. Okay? You, you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to teach them like that. Look at Proverbs 23, 26. Proverbs 23, 26. Proverbs 23, 26. The Bible says, My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. You know, this is very, very important. If you can have your children give you their hearts. That's what we did with our daughters. We made a covenant with our daughters. As soon as they turned 13, we made a covenant with them. They got a ring. Okay? They got a ring. And that was their promise ring. Promise ring. Okay? And they promised mom and dad that we had their hearts. That they were not going to give their hearts to anybody else until the time when they would be married. Okay? That's one of the things when you have your child's heart. 
in the book of Proverbs, over and over again, you see the words, my son, keep me thy heart. You know, when they trust you with their hearts, that is wonderful if you can do that, okay? Look at Proverbs 29. Remember the rod, okay? Don't be afraid to use the rod. It is given by God, okay? Proverbs 29, verse 15. Proverbs 29, verse 15, the Bible says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Verse 17, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul, because you correct them. A child can become angry when his, when his parents are not doing their due diligence. A child can sense that. Okay? Because what, what is the best that you can do for your child? Give him love, provide for him, and teach him. But if they don't, if they don't receive that from you, they can get very discouraged. A child can sense that. Proverbs 23, 13. Proverbs 23, 13. Withhold not correction from a child, for if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with a rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. Okay? This idea that some men started, that all you have to do is talk to your child, that's nonsense. Okay? I see it all the time. There's Christians that use it. Oh no, I just talked to Johnny. Come on, Johnny, be a good boy. I'll buy you a candy. You know, that that's that's blackmail. You're dealing with a terrorist. Don't do it. Give them the rod. They'll love you because you give them discipline. Okay? Remember, children come from God. They're loaned to you for a time period. Okay? They come from God. They're loaned to you for a time period. The world and their philosophy believed it. When a child becomes an 18, an adult, that they're ready to face the world. And they push them up. They say, Oh, even the eagle pushes out the little birdies on the cliff. So we have to do the same. Listen, as a parent, you need to do your due diligence for your child. He might reach the age of 18. It doesn't mean he's an adult. I know men that were 30 years old that acted like children, that acted like teenagers. Just because they reach a certain age doesn't mean they... They know everything already, and they got it all figured out. No. As a parent, your job is to prepare them. You're preparing them to face the world. Yeah, someday they might leave. Yeah, someday they're going to get married. Yeah, that's going to happen. If the Lord tarries, that's going to happen. That's just the way of life. So, as a parent, you need to do your due diligence to prepare that child. If you don't do your best as a mother or a dad and you just push them on like that, the red dragon is going to eat him up, spin him up. Okay? You, you can't do that to your child. Prepare him, prepare her to go out to face the world. You are investing in your future. I'm going to say something, Mary will probably be embarrassed, but it's okay. She was on her last trip. As a singing group, right? Last trip. And then she was going to graduate and come home. One of those trips over there somewhere in Ohio somewhere, somebody offered her a job. She got all excited. And she said, Dad, you offer me a position right here. And she was raring to go. She was ready to charge. And mom and I said, no, you're not ready. We don't know where you are. We don't know if you're going to be working for. You're not prepared. 
Me personally, as a father, I had I had not completed my job yet. I had not done my due diligence. What kind of father am I if I would just let it go like that? I said, no, 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 that's not right. I couldn't live with myself if I did that. I said, look, you don't have any health insurance. What if you get sick? Okay? You don't have a driver's license. How are you going to get around? You don't have a car. You don't have a dental program. You're not ready. If I said Joe like that, what kind of parent am I? I said, no, no. She was very upset. Because she was ready to go. But time passed. Time passed. One day I was sitting there with a lazy boy, reading something and watching something. And she stopped by. She was one out of the room. She stopped by and she said, Dad, to be honest. Thanks. I said, For what? She said, Stand before God and say, okay, why did he why did this one turn out like that? Did you not teach him? Did you do your best? You're gonna have to answer to God. I'm afraid a lot of parents are gonna be, you know, embarrassed. I'm afraid we're gonna lose a lot of rewards. Some parents are. Because they didn't do their best. So on Father's Day. Not Father's Day, but on Father's Day, let's do our best for our children. Okay? You're only going to have them one time. Hey, they're just passing through. Mm -hmm. They are just passing through. Okay? Even Abraham, when he saw the angels that were just passing through on the way to Sodom and Gomorrah, said to Sarah, and said, here, kill the goat. Get the dinner going. We've got to take care of these men. And they were just passing through. How much more are you going to do with your child who live with you? You got to do the utmost. Hey, listen, by the time they leave, you should say, son, go, God be with you. And you're going to know in your heart that you did your best. That you're going to have rest because you did your best. Amen? Let's pray. Join me in prayer if you like. Let me go all the there. Be a good time to say, Lord, I'm going to do my best for my child. Whatever it takes, I'm going to have for a little bit. You gave them to me. It's a treasure from you. I'm going to do my best. Thank you, Father, for the many opportunities you give us to do right. I pray for those fathers, oh God, that you comfort those fathers who, who didn't have this opportunity because they didn't know better and now that they're grown up. They're suffering the consequences. There's pain there in relationships. But I thank you, Lord God, that you're merciful also, Lord God, and you give many opportunities, Lord God, to do right. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to be a father. Thank you, Father God, for our arrows. Lord, one day we're going to shoot them out, Lord God, and they're going to bring honor and glory to your holy name. Because we did our best. Father, we love you. We thank you for our children, Lord God. We ask these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing uh, one verse of 147, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
147, here we go, all together. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, meaning of the everlasting heart. 